welcome back to this channel. Today is gonna be my April wrap up and I just can't believe that April is already over. It was my birthday month and there were quite a lot of things that were happening. As usual, I feel like every month this year brings has brought a lot of change uh, and in ways that I really didn't predict and in ways that I've been learning so much from. Um, but yeah, so this month, um, the books that I ended up reading were a bit different from what I expected and I actually have a new mic as well, so I don't know whether you can tell the audio difference but I am recording on my phone as well as a backup audio so we'll see which audio comes out on top. This month I actually did read two fiction titles, which is quite surprising because I tend not to read fiction at all. And before I start on the April books, um, there is this one book that I read in March but I forgot to include in my March wrap-up. So the book is The Reinvention of Humanity, A Story of Race, Sex, Gender and the Discovery of Culture by Charles King. This book is a kind of autobiographical account of some of the pioneer thinkers in anthropology and what's really really interesting um, was that the author kind of focused on a few, just a few, like um, four or five of the figures um, and really elaborated on their backstory. What I really really appreciated was that, um, that there was a representation of indigenous scholarship as well as african-american scholarship in the field of anthropology which i was not expecting at all because you know anthropology has a bit of a problematic history and i studied anthropology in my undergraduate studies so um i kind of ha have been made very aware of um, how it kind of started from kind of, kind of racist and colonialist um, you know, intentions, um, and it's still rapidly evolving as a discipline today. So I was kind of pleasantly surprised that this book did kind of, you know, provide a bigger picture um, to these thinkers and to actually argue, you know, actually to show and depict how non-conformist some of these thinkers were and that anthropology was this very weird discipline that people were trying to make into science. But you know, it, it wasn't really science and the thinkers that were writing all these things, like, um, at the end of the day, they just wanted people to respect differences and respect diversity. And there was a very interesting observation that, you know, the best students in the discipline tend to be women. And this is something that Franz Boas was like kind of puzzled by, you know. I mean, being an anthro nerd, this book was really fun for me to read. <laughs> but I feel like if you are not really into anthropology or, you know, you're new to it, um, it might be a bit dry because it is very, very thick. It was like this thick, I think. And it was fun for me. I mean, I read like, you know, maybe a, you know, a couple of pages every night and it was very pleasant enjoyable like discovery of something that I had studied before so um, yeah I would recommend it for you who are for people who are already interested in anthropology if not um, there are other ways to read about the discipline uh, this is really probably for people people who are already a bit familiar with the subject so yeah that was the book that I read in March that I did not cover in the March wrap up and now let's move on to the actual April books. So I have some of the hard copies here but not all of them. So the very first book that I started out with was After the Inquiry by Jolene Tan. This is a local work um, by a Singaporean author, Jolene Tan, uh, who has written other books before but I've not read her other works so I can't tell whether you know how that work compares to the others but what, from what I know the other books uh, were kind of geared towards a slightly younger audience whereas this is kind of a full-fledged novel um, not just like YA but you know general audiences um, I would say that my first impression was that yeah I, I was really impressed by this book I feel like in local literature you know Singapore scene is still pretty small and there are certain themes that always get discussed and you know the theme of the bureaucracy and of um, like practicality is something that is sometimes discussed but not taken as a you know subject um, so in intensely studied as in this novel so for that reason alone I felt like that was pretty 
interesting and intriguing and this is a mystery novel which is interesting because I don't really read mystery at all so that was I would say it was a very fun read um, and thought-provoking in some senses um, my only like caveat was I guess like the characterization of the main character uh, which is Boon Tech. I wasn't really convinced in the first half of, of the novel of how this character was um, fleshed out I mean I felt it was a bit uh haphazard at times or I felt like it wasn't really something that felt very true or like felt very uh ha- like I didn't quite understand the motivations between behind depicting the character in certain ways or like the words that he would say or why he would include certain things because you know this book is written in the format of a uh, report you know with footnotes and everything so sometimes the format didn't really make sense because you know, why would you include certain things if it was a report? Um, yeah, so <laughs> that was the only caveat that I had. Um, but overall, I would say that this is a really, really good novel that I would recommend to people who, you know, are, are, are interested in, in expanding their, you know, repertoire of, like, local literature. Because this was published really recently, like, a month ago, or I guess two months ago now. Um, yeah, and I really enjoyed it, so... I mean, I don't have ratings on this channel, so just take it as you will. <laughs> okay, so the next book that I read was Solved by Andrew Ware. Um, I think something about how other countries have cracked world problems and how we can too. Um, um, long story short, I don't recommend this book at all. I feel like this is a very classic case of someone who has done public policy very, very broadly and um, just kind of just dumps everything into one book. Um, I think if you have read anything that's got to do with countries and development and uh, anything that's got to do with, I guess, like international politics, you would know that things are very, very complex. And just because one solution works in one country doesn't always mean it works in other countries. And I think my biggest caveat was really because um, this author simply does not acknowledge um, the biasness in his research, um, which is that he's very, very heavily focused on countries in the global north and how they have solved problems and how other countries can follow suit. But the, the fact is that a lot of the countries in the global north had, you know, different starting points. They were able to sometimes enact certain solutions because of the hierarchy of positions that they already occupied on a global scale. So really, that alone, you can't expect certain countries who are not in that top performing index to be able to re-enact some of the solutions that those countries already did. Um, I, just feel, I just felt like, you know, at least um, the author could have recognized this and you know, I think there's nothing wrong with, you know, seeing how generally solutions were enacted in other countries and then thinking about how you can impl- implement it in your own country's context. But I really feel like if you're talking about public policy, this is like a huge, huge, huge gap that you have to acknowledge no matter what. And it would have just been great if he dedicated a short chapter or like a short segment understanding that, yes, like countries... Um, were you know advantaged in certain ways and that this could pose as a gap or this could be this could pose as additional obstacles for countries that were previously exploited um maybe they were you know colonized and things like that and you know just something to acknowledge that and to recognize that these solutions have to be tailored um to countries and to acknowledge that yeah to you know how do you then start to grapple with that disconnect so I felt like it was very very narrow and most probably if you're like a tech dude that you know only ever reads a certain type of daily journal and certain type of news then you might be really convinced by this book but I would say on a for a general audience um I really hope that if you read this book and you found it to be an excellent book that you would actually question like why this book might be very excellent to you because I would say that really this is a very very typical global north centric mindset that is very typical in a lot of non-fiction which I am quite disappointed by um, and that's why I won't 
I won't really recommend this book. I would say that only read this book if you are you know very informed as a public policy student and you know how to um, fill out the pitfalls of this book. Okay, so the third book that I read was this one. This is called called Queer Intentions: A Personal Journey Through LGBTQ Plus Culture by Amelia Abraham. And you know this the intro of this book really sold me. <laughs> and I really love the premise of this book. This is like um yeah, like exactly what the subtitle says. It's a personal journey through um yeah, like LGBTQ plus culture and the author uses her own personal journey through her own reckoning of her own identity to explore the themes around, you know, queer cultures, you know, across the um across the world. But world meaning yes, it's the Western centric world. So there is no mentions of like uh, any Asian context in this book. Um and I think as long as you're aware of that then that's fine. Um and I would say that I really love Abraham's writing. I feel like it's a perfect mix of, you know, humor and uh, contemplation, intellect, and all those things. And it's still very lighthearted while asking some pretty big questions about what it means to have, you know, a marginal community uh, assimilated into a majority culture. Um, and that leaves me a lot to think about because I think a lot about queer culture a lot I feel like I've been surrounded by it and to you know I've learned so much from it and to find my identity within it that you know the push for equality what does that really mean or what does it mean for for queerness to be um, accepted recognized legitimized um, and does that mean that there are certain parts of it that will be eroded over time so I would say that I really 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 enjoyed the questions that this book posed and I would really want to find more um, queer books relating to my own personal context because I feel like that is so lacking especially in Singapore where it is still considered a very touchy t subject which is so unfortunate because it is not a touchy t subject at all so yeah so the next book that I read was what can a body do how we meet the built world by Sarah Hendren. This book was really random. Um, I was just browsing the library um, and I actually picked up John Berger's autobiography which I intended to read but I didn't read it because yeah the timing just not was, wasn't right and while I was browsing for that I picked up this book on the way. It was on the display shelf and um, previously I did read um, this book called Disability Visibility that's edited by Alice Wong and it introduced me to this whole you know uh, field of disability studies and I've heard about it before I did read about disability studies when I was studying um, feminist theory and uh, in back in university but I never actually you know like when head in into the field or read anything that was very specific to um, the range of of experiences um, around the disability community. So I picked up this book because I was so intrigued by design, um, about what constitutes inclusive design. Um, this is a huge idea in my head since last year. Um, you know, I'm not a design person, like I've not been trained in design, but it's super super fascinating to me because I am a huge believer of how the physical environment and the built environment reflects us and how we shape the physical environment as well and so this book was like the perfect in between uh, of yeah like disability studies and design and the idea that inclusive design um, is a right um, to is a right for people of all sorts of bodies and to recognize that whenever we inhabit this physical body it changes and it shifts and at any one point of our lives we could be disabled or we could you know be put at a disadvantage by our built environment 
just by virtue of our bodies. Um, so this could just be anything re- relating to your body, you know, that you, you don't fit into this norm. So what is the norm of a body, a functioning body? And also, there's just so many questions about, you know, how disability is produced by the environment and not necessarily because you are non-functioning as a physical entity. So that was really, really, really good, um, really great um, exercise in understanding all these topics and how they interact. Um, I would say I strongly recommend this book uh, for those of you who are interested in design and also interested in how do you have inclusive design, uh, uh, not just for the disabled community, but in general also how you should uh, approach designing for bodies of all types. So I I really enjoy this book. I really think it's uh, right up my alley as to, you know, a book that's thought-provoking and very informative and really helped helped me understand a bit more about what it means to be inclusive and kind of breaking down um, societal concepts conceptions of the body how that should look like so yeah I strongly recommend this book I would say that it was very 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 educational very informative I just really enjoyed the writing as well so cool I realized that I read very interesting non-fiction titles this month which I'm super grateful for and I found another favorite of mine uh, this month which is Offline Matters The Less Digital Guide to Creative Work by Jess Henderson and yeah I really am thinking of buying my own physical copy of this because of just how fantastic it is um Jess Henderson is it's it's, it's a pseudonym so it's not the uh, not the author's actual name so this book was birthed out of this author's um, anonymous newsletter um, talking about how creative work has been overly digitized and how we are over prioritizing um, whatever goes on online so this entails the whole industry of online marketing about the digital landscape um, and how we start to yeah overemphasize um, this digitalness. The design of the book is just so... (laughs) it's just so edgy and I love it. Um, And this is a book that will stick, you know, on the walls of my mind for a very long time. Um, And I would love to read and reread it over and over again. I just feel like, yeah, content creating has really opened my eyes to how yeah, you know, people have how people self fashion them, you know, themselves online, and how that kind of factors into how people see you, and how that how people also interact with you offline. Because I, you know, I've made friends online that now I talk to offline, and that's very strange because, you know, I've I've always been more of an offline person. I don't hang out with my friends online. A lot of my dear dearest friends are people that I've talked to offline. Uh, over a period of time like over a long period of time and you know I, I'm not someone that you naturally wants to interact with people online I think so I I sincerely really enjoy this book I don't even know how to describe it it's a manifesto it's it's for anyone who's creative who feels like the energies are being drained by being online and I think that in itself is really worth to read especially if you're someone who has to deal with having this online persona and you're not sure where it's going um, and yeah I think I would definitely get my own physical copy uh, I have this phys- library copy until the end of June so hopefully maybe I can find a way to buy it somewhere <laughs> yes okay finally the last book is actually a novel fantastic and the novel is The Vegetarian by Han Kang This is a book that has been on my TBR for a freaking long time and I just never read it because I knew that Hong Kong's writing can be pretty gory and intense and um, I think, you know, I think one of the main reasons why I don't read a lot of novels and fiction is because I get really, really affected by um, fictional writing. I get really affected by writing that's so... um, it, you know that that's so 
um, that a writing that holds you captive, I get a lot more affected by it. So previously, I read this collection of short stories by a lo- by a local author, and it gave me nightmares <laughs> for like three nights in a row. And so Hong Kong's writing, unfortunately for this book, I had to rush through it because I I had to return it to the library. Um, but it was definitely a very haunting and lingering read. I think it's a book that the details, if you get deep into it, it's very visceral. It's very, very, it's very, very like, it feels very real, yet surreal. It describes the condition of a modern day, um, you know, modern day family in a country like South Korea. Um, it describes the condition so well, that kind of repression of your primal instincts, a kind of repression of everything that makes you you, but you have to hide it in order to live according to society's rules. And it just has to begin, it just has to start with one small act of rebellion for that entire picture to fall apart. I think that's what was so, that's what my biggest takeaway was, was that the smallest act of rebellion can really unravel this whole, you know, like, house of cards, right? Like this, because I also grew up in a Asian family, and I also grew up in a very, very, very stressful environment in Singapore. I know how it feels like, like, to have this um, stack of cards, you know, it looks picture perfect, and you spend your entire life, like, building it up and, and not messing with anyone and no one messing with you because that's what society tells you to do is to build up your assets as well as possible as carefully as possible it only takes one push for everything to fall apart and i think that feeling was so well captured in this novel um and i would say yeah i think definitely reading it from my context as my position as a position of a woman who did grow up in you know a more conservative society a developed country yeah i i resonate with this sentiment a lot so yeah that's the end of my april wrap up um it's so long i realized that i read so many amazing books this month uh surprisingly uh even though i told myself that you know even though in between it felt a bit like dreary but actually at the end of it all uh, these were some pretty amazing books I read, and I'm so happy that I encountered so many of them while randomly browsing. So, a lot of these books I just randomly found, and yeah, decided to pick them up, and they have given me so much, yeah, like so much good information, and so ma- so many things to think about that I feel like I just, yeah, like I feel like my brain just grew, <laughs> like double the size over the past month. Um, And yeah, so thanks so much for joining me on this wrap-up. I hope it was fun for you. I clearly had a lot more fun talking about the books this month than usual. Um, I hope that shows. Uh, I still should read more local literature, local non-fic. But yeah, I'll just see where my mood takes me. Um, And also, I've been active on TikTok, so follow me there, I guess. Um, If not, I also have my bookstagram, as usual, that I've been running. Um, And there are just so many things to talk about. Uh, I might be working on a newsletter soon, but I'm not too sure, so (sighs) we'll see how that goes. Um, And thanks so much for staying with me all the way to the end. If you read any of these books, let me know what you think about them. Or if not, you can just let me know, you know, what you've been reading this month as well, or any books that you've read regarding the topics that I talked about earlier in this video. So thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you. I said that already, but I'll see you. (laughs) 